Good evening, everybody. Today, we are going to be talking about Young's Geometry, uh, which is sort of a, an offshoot of Fano's Geometry. You recall, uh, Fano's Geometry had five axioms, and Young's Geometry was uh, simply the geometry that resulted when you swapped out the fifth axiom for a different version. <clears throat> so what we're going to be doing in this series of pen casts is discussing uh, things that you can prove about Young's geometry from the axioms, and uh, we're going to emphasize in these pen casts the distinction between uh, sort of presenting a, a, a convincing argument that something is true and presenting a, a solid and rigorous proof that something is true. <clears throat> so uh, let's review the axioms for Young's geometry. Uh, you know this from your quiz already. Uh, the first axiom is that there exists at least one line. Uh, the second axiom says that every line in the geometry has exactly three points on it. Uh, axiom three says that not all points in the geometry are on the same line. Axiom four says that for each two distinct points, there exists exactly one line on both of those points. And axiom 5 says if a point does not lie on a given line, then there exists exactly one line on that point that does not intersect the given line. So uh, we have these, these, uh, the statements of these axioms written up here uh, for reference, um, but I do, um, for, for later pen casts, I want to have uh, pictorial representations of these. So pictorially, axiom one says there's a line somewhere. Okay, so if you start with nothing, there's a line that is somewhere in our geometry. And that's all it says. That's all it guarantees is that somewhere uh, in this geometry there's a line. Uh, axiom two says that each line in the geometry has three points on it. So since uh, we have a line here, Axiom 2 says that we have to have three points on it. Uh, axiom 3 says that not all points in the geometry are on the same line. So if we have some line here, uh, there has to be some point out here that is not on the line. Axiom 4 says that for each two distinct points, there exists exactly one line on both of them. So here we have two distinct points in the geometry and what axiom 4 guarantees is that there is some line that connects those two uh, and that there exists exactly one of those lines okay and axiom 5 says that if a point does not lie on a given line then there exists exactly one line on that point that does not intersect the given line so here we have a line that's somewhere in the geometry and a point that is in the geometry that is not on the given line. Uh, axiom 5 guarantees that there must be this other line here that doesn't intersect with the, uh, the first line. Okay? Uh, and in later pencasts, I'm just going to copy down the pictures uh, to remind us what, what the uh, axioms and propositions say. Uh, so what we're going to prove in this pencast is Proposition 1, uh, and um, I should note that, that Proposition 1, uh, that all of these propositions are not actually in the book. Uh, the, the textbook actually proves very little about Young's geometry, so I went rummaging around and I found some, some things that we can prove about it, uh, because I think we need some, some extra practice uh, in in writing proofs. Um, this is a proof-based uh, course, and uh, that's kind of, it's kind of our thing. So Proposition 1 says that for every point in the geometry, presumably, there is a line that is not on the point. So we start with a point uh, somewhere in the geometry, and we are going to show that somewhere there is some line that does not contain that point. Okay, so why should this be true? Or why must this be true? Okay, so we're just going to sort of throw some ideas around. Uh, keep in mind that um, 
at this point, we have no, uh, no other results than these five axioms. So uh, whatever our argument is, uh, it, it's going to have to rely exclusively on these five axioms. Um, so we have uh, some point. Let P be a point in Young's geometry. Okay. P is a point. Uh, now, uh, what can we say at this point? Well, uh, we need to be getting to. We need to be getting at there being some line that doesn't contain this point. Uh, and at this point, the only thing that that tells us about a line even existing is axiom one. So axiom one says there is a line somewhere. Okay. Now, uh, if we're lucky, this line, L, does not contain P. So, lucky case. So, L does not contain P. Now, if this is actually uh, what happens with the one line that we're guaranteed by axiom 1, uh, then we're done. We have shown that there is a line L that is not on the point P. So, we win. Um, but, uh, at this point, we have no reason to believe that this must happen. Uh, but if it does, uh, then, then we're okay. So, what about the unlucky case? Suppose we have our point P, and axiom 1 just gave us a line that is on P. So, L is on P. We don't win yet. with the emphasis on yet. Okay, so we have a, our point P, uh, and we have a line that contains P. Now, axiom 3 says that uh, not all the points in the geometry are on any given line, so they can't all be on L. That means that there must be some point P prime that is not on L. Okay, and axiom 5 actually comes to our rescue. Axiom 5 says that for if you have a point that is not on a given line, then you can draw a line through that point that doesn't intersect with the given line. So, since P prime is not on L, then we can draw some line L prime that doesn't intersect with L. And now why is that important? Well, if L prime actually contained the point P, then uh, L prime would be intersecting with L. So, since L prime does not intersect with L, L prime does not contain the point P. Uh, and now we've won again. Uh, so, if the line that we're guaranteed by the by axiom one doesn't contain p, then we're done. But if it does, we can very easily uh, apply axioms three and five to come up with a different line that doesn't contain p. So either way, we win. Okay. So um, now that we have the idea about what what is going on in this proof, we can write it up carefully. Okay, so we started off by saying uh, we have some point P in Young's geometry, and then we said axiom 1 guarantees that there's a line somewhere in the geometry, and if that line doesn't contain P, we win, and if it doesn't, con or if it does contain P, then we can construct a point P prime that's not on that line, and then construct a line through that 
point P prime that doesn't intersect L and that line doesn't contain P. Okay, so either way we win. Uh, and so let's let's rehash our argument uh, in uh, some more rigorous statements. So our proof says let P be any point in Young's geometry. And so what did we say by axiom one? Says axiom one, there is a line somewhere. Okay. So by axiom one, there must be some line L in Young's geometry. And let's just say the geometry, since I think it's a given at this point that, that we are, it's clear that we're talking about Young's geometry. Okay, so P is a point in Young's geometry. By axiom one, there must be some line L in the geometry. Uh, and so now we're to the, the two different cases. The lucky case was that L does not contain P. So if L does not contain P, the proof is finished. However, suppose we are in the unlucky case. Suppose that P is on L. Uh, so we're over here in the unlucky case and uh, what we did was we constructed this point P prime that was not on this line and constructed a line through it. Okay, so by axiom 3, there must be some point P prime that is not on L. Axiom 5 says that there exists some line L prime that contains P prime that does not uh, intersect the given line L. Therefore, L prime does not contain the point P. And that is exactly what we were going for. So in either case, whether axiom one gives us a line that contains P or does not contain P, uh, we eventually end up showing that there must be some line that some line in the geometry that does not contain P. Okay, so what I want you, what I want to call to your attention is the the very um, is the difference between um, how scattered and how how we jumped around when we were trying to figure out how to prove this uh, compared to what the actual write up looked like. Um, it it really it really needs to be emphasized here that no one actually thinks 
uh, in the same in the way that we write proofs. No one thinks this way. Naturally. Okay? This is like writing an essay and then, then revising it and revising it. Uh, we, are, we are taking all the ideas that we came up with in this sort of haphazard uh, way and then we are sort of distilling them into the most important parts and uh, making sure that we express everything in exactly the terms of the axioms that we're given. Okay, so uh, um, we're going to move on. We're going to take a break, and we're going to move on to Proposition 2. I'll see you next.